welcome you to the next session of uh, embedded software testing uh, unit 5 series this is regarding uh, test management uh, lecture 3 and uh, today we study about uh, change management incident management revision history cm tools a uh, few examples of uh, configuration management tools we will uh, have a look before that we will try to go through what we had uh, studied in the previous session uh, we had uh, gone through some of the <coughs> activities of uh, configuration management uh, in particular scm it is called software configuration management activities so it involves uh, scm planning scm uh, sorry sc identification that is configuration identification software configuration identification and there is a term called uh, baselining and uh, software configuration control. So, basically, what we do here is uh, the life cycle changes we will manage, uh, basically, it is getting controlled. So, there is a uh, dedicated uh, person for this who is called as an admin or a configuration controller. Basically, he can also be a member of a uh, uh, control board, configuration control board, it is called as. So, they will basically decide uh, on the changes and the impacts uh, what is the kind of modification either to accept reject or to refer it all this they will decide. So, this is an important aspect of uh, SEM activity. Uh, next we have studied about uh, software configuration status accounting here basically what we do is uh, we will uh, get the complete information about uh, the configuration of the entire project life cycle items specifically the CIs or the configuration items. It maintains uh, the information about the configuration documentation, uh, configuration documentation uh, basically will have all the CIs list folders, where is the location, what is the baseline, what is the revision number, all the information about that will be there part of the uh, configuration document and documentation. So, this configuration documentation will be maintained by inside the configuration status report that status report is nothing but the activity is called as software configuration status accounting. It also maintains the information about the products operational and maintenance documentation how we are going to carry out. So, what are the current information that is available, uh, what are documents affected by uh, the changes and uh, those changes whether uh, what is the status of those whether they got updated or any changes are in progress all this status about the configuration each of the configuration uh, identified uh, identification uh, elements will be maintained. And also it enables a retrieval of information concerning change decisions and provides a source for configuration history of a product like what is the history behind all these changes and its configuration details will be provided by this uh, status accounting. And all the data collected during configuration status accounting is maintained in configuration status accounting report. So, there is a frequency like bi weekly or monthly wise, uh, this uh, report will be generated. This report generation is also part of the configuration status accounting report. Basically, this collects for that particular month whatever the configuration items uh, undergone changes, updates, impacts, all this information will be reported. Configuration status accounting uh, helps in establishing the maintenance, uh, establishing and maintaining the configuration records for CAs. Uh, the next activity we went through the last one in the same activity is nothing but the software configuration audit. So, how the configuration accounting and the CAs are getting maintained? So, there is an independent audit conducted by few auditors, it can be from the same organization or from an independent team or outside or it could be from customer also. So, there is a representative, so he will have his own checklist and guidelines against which he will go through and all these guidelines, standards, plans <coughs> and procedures will be part of the plan. The plan is nothing but what we studied about is SEM planning. So, plan will tell, so at what frequency, what will be maintained, what are the CIs all this. Against that whether are these being clearly maintained and tracked under the SEM activities are being audited. 
that is nothing but con software configuration audit. So a software configuration audit performed independently to evaluate the conformance of software products and process to the standards, guidelines, plans and procedures. So there are basically two types of audits which you have studied functional configuration audit and physical configuration audit. Uh, FCA is done uh, functional configuration audit is done to ensure that configuration item to audit is consistent with its specification and the physical configuration audit is uh, going to make sure that the design and the reference documentation is consistent with the built software product. So whatever we spoke about folder structure, versions, baselining, all these activities physically they are available in the configuration repository is part of the physical configuration audit. Then we went through few example uh, life cycle CIs and uh, the baseline various baseline events that are going to happen for that particular CI. For example, project environment is also can be a CI as and when it is identified in the project suppose some new tool new configuration data from customer or some technical documents arrived that also will be part of the CI list and it has its own chain of approval and all that mechanism based on that that is called as a baseline event and particular baseline event will identify that particular configuration identification item. Then we went through the SCM phases which are nothing but initiation, planning, execution and closure. Initiation basically we start the project we do this, we appoint the CC configuration controller, we appoint the chain control uh, configuration controller board, we also conduct uh, CC training as part of the uh, configuration controller and the CCB. The CC training basically takes care of all this project related the configuration details, how it is going to be maintained, this will be general as well as specific to that particular project. And uh, the next one is the planning, so we do the identification of uh, CI, we write the procedure and uh, naming conventions, labeling mechanisms, versioning, review and baselines all this will be part of the planning. Then we will have the execution, so whatever the issues that we go through during the CM or the audits we are going to correct it, so that correction and uh, changes are part of the execution. Closure is upon the SEM closure. This is basically going to happen when we have the project getting identified as a closure, and we will identify a closure meeting. And during that meeting, we will identify with our stakeholders what are the things that are going to be returned, what are the things that we are going to return in the sense we are going to close the licenses or we are going to archive the. Um, uh, the files or the database or the any repository elements and any materials that we need to return back to customer all this will be part of the SEM closure. So we also went through some of the example like objective scope what we are going to do for the SEM process, the process tasks will establish the SEM environment, identify CAs, create intermediate and final product baselines. Raise CRPR, CRPR for modification of software life cycle item. CR is nothing but change request, PR is nothing but a problem report. Change request could be an enhancement or a new features, PR is nothing but a problem report due to an issue or error in the existing element, element of the software life cycle. This PR will be raised and PR has to get approved or rejected by the uh, relevant stakeholders such as customers and the changes will be analyzed and the impact will be approved by the CCB which is nothing but the configuration controller board, control board. And there is a dedicated person for doing the CM activities as I said who is called as a CM or a CM admin who is also likely to call as CC configuration controller who maintains and do a retention mechanism of all these data elements of the SDLC software development life cycle by him. So basically status accounting keeps track of CAs delivered products 
when it was delivered, what are the changes, what are the change requests, what are the upload requests, all this. And we went through configuration item versioning, this is a very important aspect. Here we identify as a draft version, baseline version, minor changes baseline and major changes baseline. So, the drafts will be usually in terms of fractional elements like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. Baselines will be 1, 2 in increments of the integers, it will be done. And any intermediate versions, we are going to keep track of versioning in 1.1, 1.2, etc. Major changes or major, major baselines or reverse will be done with the help of higher increments such as 2.0, 3.0. Or 10.0, 20.0, etc. It is depending on the project nature, complexity, and the release mechanism. Next, the thing that we studied is about baseline, minimum baseline, and intermediate baselines. We are going to have it. This will be keep on happening during the project life cycle. So, the project life cycle items will have a testing baseline, design baseline, and service baseline. All this will be part of the configuration item. Also, we studied about a workspace, how it is going to be maintained. There is a repository, and that repository will be used for adding the files or taking out the files and updating it and adding again. This process is called check in, check out, and the files are getting inspected or used by the verification team with the help of his workspace called verification workspace. So, that is what we studied in the previous class. We go through the change management aspects in today's session. Change management. So, what is change? Change means any update or request for changes that are going to happen on a specific item that is something like a living document, that is something like a living code, that is something like a living deliverable. This is all part of the change. And how are you going to manage it? How are you going to maintain it? It's all part of the change management. So we we receive a request for change. It is called a change request. First, what we are going to do is we are going to document it, and the complete change cycle change management will happen with the help of the below items. We analyze the impact of the particular change request. We are going to approve for the analysis what is the impact is going to happen how we are going to change and that should be approved by the change request approver those are nothing but the project manager who is also can be part of CCB and minor changes of course uh, at the project manager level it can be done any major changes it has to go through the CCB here uh, major changes could be something like A major functionality or a feature or any optimization, etc. Minor changes are something like <coughs> minor comments fixing, any documentation issues, documentation in the source code, uh, or like uh, enough comments are not there, etc. Those kind of uh, uh, it is called uh, category two changes, uh, minor changes. The major changes are called as category one. So likewise, we are going to have uh, the different types of uh, changes. Accordingly, we are going to get it approved by different team. One is by the test manager or the project manager. The other one is with the help of the board. So it is a major change, and the board can also have a customer involved. So making of changes we do with the element, that element is already a CI, we are going to check out or we are going to take it out from the configuration repository, the repository will be maintained with different CM tools, we will study about CM tools later, CM tools something like PVCS, JIT or SVN, VSS, there are a number of tools, also we have MKS etc. So, majorly these are some of the 
repository tools that are used in the uh, embedded uh, automotive or uh, aerospace industry and uh, we need to have a review of the changes that are required and uh, once we are uh, done with the changes the review comments will have to be reworked once the uh, rework is done it is good for check in and we are going to check in with a new version number. So, new version number we do not need to provide by ourselves the tool will take care by incrementing the next number that increment number how it is going to increment we are going to define during the configuration of the CM tool the configuration management tool. Finally, we are going to have a change closure this will be through project manager uh, updates to customer or his workbook whatever it could be. So, that is what we follow in the change process part of the change management. Next incident management, so what is an incident? Any significant unplanned event that occurs during testing or other event that requires subsequent investigation or resolution, it means something has happened let us define about that something uh, soon that something is going to cause during the testing or development basically we focus on testing because our uh, uh, presentation is about uh, testing embedded software testing and that changes or that incident requires some investigation and some resolution without that attaining to that uh, event we cannot proceed or there are certain blockages because of that event. So, that is nothing but an incident. So, that incident could be something like during testing it can happen or test case in the development it can happen, test environment it can happen or test planning deviation it could happen while doing the execution we can get a incidents. So, likewise it is up to the planning how we are going to define the incident or if an incident is unplanned that also can be called as an incident and under the incident management that has to be uh, taken care. So, something like uh, differences in actual and expected test result is nothing but an incident that means it is a failure. Possible causes software fault expected results incorrect test was not performed correctly. So, the most dangerous part is the third part is a true incident basically why because software test or embedded software testing is supposed to be done by the dedicated testers and they are supposed to identify the faults or the errors in the develop the code and according to the requirement and the design or whatever it is they are supposed to take care of the identifying faults and the test approach or the test strategy cannot have a issue itself. So, that it is difficult to manage or control that incident also need to be taken care. So, the causes of an incident could be due to software issue or a test is failing or test is not done correctly or performed correctly. And the incident can be raised against any code, any documents or it could be any environment issue or anything that is part of the embedded software testing that is what is called as an incident. <coughs> Next one is the incident management, so once we have the incidents occurred in the project so how we are going to manage is what is spoken in incident management. So, first we need to identify and detect and record it what is the incident and complete details of that particular incident the occur of the event whether it is occurring again and again frequency. So, what is the surrounding conditions under which this incident is happening so what is the preconditions during what execution this is failing. So, who is doing what is the responsibility uh, due to which this incident has happened likewise we have several identification and detection uh, mechanisms that will be recorded once it is not going to analyze it is just going to capture the first step then we are going to have 
a quick analysis and classification we are going to prioritize suppose there are three four incidents that have occurred depending on the priority we are going to classify what sort of a incident it is and we are going to come up quickly with a quick analysis of that particular incident then once we are done with the analysis we are going to have a investigation of detailed analysis so the second step is quick analysis next one is the detailed analysis okay so once we have done with the investigation the cause and the source of issue that is something like problem report with a a possible solution also it will be part of that detailed analysis and action will be taken care in next step called resolution and recovery so how are you going to recover the future incidents that is what recovery mechanism talks about and uh, currently occurred incidents will have to be addressed with the resolution that we have okay and once we have the resolution available and the incident is no more we are going to have a incident closure and at any time it must be possible to see the current status of the reported incident so once they have their incident reported it will move into different states basically or different stages basically it is called the stages are again derived from the various actions that are going to be taking taken care on the address the incident so the incident is a new one it is just open or reopened if the incident is under incident resolution or incident is under wait stage or reject stage or fixed stage or the problem is fixed so the next stage is included to build once it is included it has to be verified whether that incident is resolved finally we are going to close it so all these stages can be seen in the mechanism of the life cycle of that particular incident management so this is part of the incident management so that we know that what is the stage of the particular incident and this is about statusing of the incident we can have the stages of incident recorded and reported for example in terms of the incident is just new occurred the incident is accepted by the stakeholders and uh, incident is assigned to the person who is going to resolve it the incident is in progress the incident could be on hold because there is no solution for that and temporarily it is working or the resolution is not at complete or the resolution that has been done is not consistently working so we can make it as a on hold sort of a status or the stage then the incident is solved and it is closed closed so basically these are some of the incident stages that also can be used for incident management so so at times at times what will happen in the embedded software is suddenly numerous issues or incidents are occur so definitely we are going to have a priority so priority is the but we are going to assign priority for each of these six and the priority is basically decided based on the impact plus urgency of that impact impact as well as the timeline that is required to get resolved that particular incident so that is what we do with the priority and accordingly all the incidents will have a priority and other things like escalation matrix escalation triggering mechanisms and uh, the incident uh, 
please mind that incident could be a test issue, testing issue, environment suddenly some environment or some uh, hardware has broken or crashed, which you need to escalate to the higher management. And higher management could resolve with an alternate mechanism or to talk to customer, whatever it could be. So all this will be part of the incident management. The escalation matrix it is called as in such cases. So there are relevant stakeholders that take care of the incident management. Okay. Any report that we are going to have in terms of configuration, chain management, or incident management, or software configuration element, all this will have a heading called revision history. This is very important because it's part of the configuration. So we need to identify or highlight that particular configuration, what was done during the various revisions of that particular element. So here is an example that has to be there in minimally in any of the artifacts. It can be any design document, requirement, cases, test planning document, test environment index, test procedures, it could be test script or it could be software code, anything should have a revision and that revision should have a minimum elements such as the below four or five columns. So first one will have a revision number, it will increment as and when we get into the new revisions and the date, author who is responsible for that revision and who has approved or reviewed, I put an example and what are the changes that has undergone during that revision, like we have updates as per the new template, there is some new template that is moved. So that is going to have another revision because that revision will be mentioned as a new one. Likewise, we are going to have a revision history. And one more thing that we need to better consider is this month. Many people have seen it again depending on the type of customer you have. European they follow with the, uh, sorry, US they follow with the month, day, year. Europeans and uh, Asian countries they have a daily, month, and year. So you have to be specific. Some countries I have seen year, month, this also format they use. You can use a hyphen or slash or colon depending on the kind of customer. So you need to take care of all these things, it's very important. So for example, uh, you are trying to send uh, with the intention that uh, May 5th you want to or May 20th you want to deliver something, suppose you have mentioned something like 20 or yeah, May 5th, May 10th let us say. So you could have mentioned something like uh, May 10th, 2014, but uh, the customer thinks that the wrongly it is mentioned because it is not matching the format that US people they follow. So similarly we cannot afford to have 05102014 or uh, our customers where we want to have it uh, 10th May is also very important. So we need to take care of uh, these things so we are uh, interact with the customer in terms of clearly mentioning what is the revision that is taken care taken place in that particular configuration item. So that needs to be spoken accurately this is very important. So the next one is uh, uh, we have studied about uh, the configuration management, incident management, software configuration management having uh, five phases, sorry four phases and the five stages, uh, five types of uh, like planning, CI, status, uh, statusing and audit. All these have to be maintained through a repository. Uh, uh, that repository is nothing but a database. Or a physical location. How are we going to maintain that physical location? How are we going to address that? So, 
we use tools various tools are there which will take care of this configuration management that is what uh, we study in cm tools all testware has to be stored in a proper way after quality checks the testware should be frozen you know what is testware all the artifacts of the testing uh, element will be part of the testware once the artifacts are ready for uh, some stage it has to be frozen to move for the next stage the next step is to make the testware configuration items and store them in a configuration management tool that means we are using a tool to configure it in the particular location or in the server in addition to the regular testware test cases and test documentation the description of the test environment tools used calibration reports and specially developed stubs any drivers and simulators should be subject to configuration management all this any tools any documents anything environment even uh, your uh, uh, wiring here wiring or the hardware changes of the hardware board uh, you, you may ask how it is going to be configured so definitely that hardware will have a circuitry that circuit will be nothing but a uh, diagram or the design so that design is part of the configuration item and any picture regarding that uh, uh, pcb or any uh, parts something like uh, discrete or analog or switches or the potters, uh, potential or potential meters this also can be configured with the specific version and the vendor or other details or if it is sub supplied by the customer that also should be configured all this will be part of the testware and uh, we need to have a configuration management with the help of configuration management tool a configuration management tool provides the functionality to keep track of the configuration items and their changes so why it is important is we need to have a track of which configuration we are using it and what are the changes that is going on currently what is getting used in the project which version of the piece of the tool we are using it so all this has to be maintained and that maintenance will be through the help of cm tool and the examples of cm tools pvcs dimensions mks svn etc these are uh, typically followed in uh, embedded industry such as aerospace telecom automotive uh, there are uh, various other tools clear case and all that depending on the sort of customer and uh, projects that is being outsourced or developed by that organization they will use it and uh, sometimes it may happen such that the configuration tool that the offshore team uses could be different than what the customer has so it will be tricky to maintain both the versions or deliverables uh, to the customer so we need to take care of such things when we do the project planning for the configuration management planning this will be in coordination with the customer similarly it is difficult if you use a different version of configuration tools as well this is also important across the geography that means we have a server one place we have a client at different place and uh, both have a different versions of the tool that is being used we need to take care of the differences or we need to have the upgrade or downgrade of the particular tool so as to take care of this differences that's one important aspect of the configuration management okay so we'll try to study a little about an example of a cm tool which is called as pvcs dimension it is a web based as well as a stand alone application both are there depending on the person and the audience they will decide what should be used and what should be installed and this basically maintains all the repository its configuration uh, versions history 
checking checkout details, adding new items, all this will be part of the activity. That activity can be taken care with the help of the PVC uh, dimensions tool. You can see this has a menu of uh, various uh, options, and uh, this is an example of a payroll. And this is a toolbar with that icon. You can use it, and uh, basically. The left hand side of this tool you can see the folder or the folder structure where the CIs or the configuration configurable items are available and we have the status of whatever the items that we have clicked or used will be available in the status bar and on the right hand side, right -hand side window you can see the project name and the project location, working bench, customer, local, whatever it is, working on which version. The working on is nothing but the, uh, the specific item which this particular window has opened, that is a change request 18 or whatever it could be. So, any update to this elements. Or the configuration items that are going to be placed here definitely will have some issue in terms of identifying it because of what or which I am going to use this tool, which is nothing but it could be a change request or a problem report, or it could be any failures that is resulting in using this tool for checking in, checking out, and all that exercises. Here you can see baselines and all the baselines are listed and each baseline can have a sub baselines you can see payroll applications, payroll backups we store, payroll calendar, database huge repository this can be maintained. If you have just a local C drive or D drive to maintain all you say that tomorrow I am going to maintain through Excel sheet and through my own local modifications. It is very difficult and tedious if you do it for hundreds of people or hundreds of software artifacts or hundreds of testing elements. If it is one or two, definitely we can maintain it, and it is difficult as the configuration items trips up. And it is also important that we need to retain it in terms of retention. Why? Because the CIs are supposed to be maintained throughout the project as well as post project in terms of warranty, maintenance. Whatever it could be, or a reuse for the other projects, <laughs> exporting, importing, and all this stuff. So definitely, there is a need of configuration management tool in embedded software or industry or the project. It's a hundred percent mandatory to follow it. Without which, the clients will not agree. We need to have a planning for this. So this is basically the PVC dimension tool. We need to have the related project to specific items listed on the folders, and each items will have intermediate versions or major versions or a baseline version. All these have to be specific specified in the work instruction. And according to the work instruction, work instruction, the configuration that we are going to configure it to, and it is going to take care throughout the project. Okay. So that is about the configuration management or the change management and incident management and the CM tools. Next we will come to the next part is called as test management. So test management is nothing but testing the project and how we are going to manage it. So how we are going to manage it? Planning of the test project which is nothing but test management. So we have test management in terms of various activities, activity test plan, planning and control, test management itself, test configuration management, methodological support, preparation phase, specification phase, engineering phase and completion phase. So we are going to have a test management identifying all these artifacts in terms of planning of 
the various these items and we are going to identify the start date, end date, total uh, uh, management effort that is test management you can see the uh, abbreviations of uh, each of these. PME is a test management, MSC is a milestone or methodical uh, methodological support, TS is technical support, these are basically the different activities for each of the test artifacts. TCM is, TCM is the test configuration manager, TST is a tester, so which identifies the various efforts and that efforts during certain period, so these are all will be part of the test management, basically this will be part of the test project initiation and the planning, so once we have done with this we are going to manage the entire project with the help of these artifacts, we are going to track and the maintain it ok. So, test process we know the test management we have and we have the test processes which has its own life cycle model and we try to align the test process in terms of software V model. So, in our previous Another session we studied about V model, multiple V model, nested V model, and all that. So similarly, test is also a part of that V model, and uh, we take an example of uh, this figure uh, from that book from uh, Bart Brookman and uh, Edwin Mortenbaum. In this figure, you can see that multiple uh, V development life cycle uh, where we have a uh, modeled. Uh, uh, where we have uh, uh, depicted a three week uh, multiple uh, development life cycle, first one is being a modeling, second one is the prototype, third one is the final product uh, uh, prioritization. In uh, model we have design, build, in, uh, in terms of development, in prototype we have a design and build and in final product design and build, each of these will have a testing phase each of us each of this will have a testing phase, so testing is also part of this V, so that is how the test process is closely related with the software V model, uh, this is important why because we are going to have the testing done along with the test approach or the test scenarios, how we are going to arrive at test approach or test scenarios or they are with the help of the various aspects of the development life cycle those aspects could be requirements design and the software build itself, so that is how the test process is very much close and related to the V model of the project life cycle. So basically the test process involves a lot of test activities there are many test design techniques that can be applied, test levels, test types that must be executed and the test related issues that require attention, the multiple V model assists in structuring these activities and issues. So, by mapping this basically the test process into the multiple V model, so it provides an insight into the when uh, one can start activities and when what is the time for a best uh, in terms of execution, which test issues are the most relevant at which stage in the development process. So, organizing the testing uh, in the complex situation of multiple view model is bit complex task suppose uh, a design is very, very tricky and we are not sure about the build is going to work in the prototype. So accordingly we are going to have the test process also a bit complicated, so how we are going to manage this, the test manager needs an overall picture of the relevant test artifacts or the activities and issues, so definitely a bigger picture and system knowledge is very important in terms of mitigating, mitigating the complexity of the various tasks, of course it depends on the particular uh, project is very unique to each project, but the general principles of structuring the test process 
always apply. Okay. So next one uh, being uh, Uh, it's an extension of uh, what we have seen in the previous uh, multiple uh, V model, V development uh, life cycle. Uh, this is uh, talking in detail in terms of uh, how we have a different uh, or multiple V model, like model prototype, final product has, like model has a mechanism and uh, analysis, low level requirements, visual design, verification, and we have a, a simulation. And we have a rare event testing, state transition testing, mode checking, all these are all aligned with the various life cycle artifacts you can see in detail. Similarly, for prototype, we have low level requirements, we have a release criteria on par with that, we have a detailed design verification, we have a system integration test. This all we have seen, right? This multiple V models. So, it is same actually in terms of test process, how it is related to. Software V model. So we have a code review. So for doing the code review, we need to have code available, and on par with that, we are going to have any testing also or the component testing. And the component testing requires implementation of the code. And with that, we are going to have the code coverage analysis. It's also a part of the test process, which is aligned to the V model. So that is what it talks about. Okay. The final product also. Prioritization or production requirements will be there, and verification requirements also will be there. Detail design will be there. Detail design requirements uh, verification will be there. Accordingly, we are going to have the product certification mechanism, certification uh, testing or acceptance testing, system acceptance testing, regression testing for multiple versions of the software with uh, uh, change in the software only, no requirements or any design modifications, which is impacting the test. So that is how it is allocated such a way that test process are aligned with the V model. Okay. The next chapter is about testing design by contract. So what is design by contract? This is another aspect of testing which is part of the test management. So test management has to define the uh, Kind of testing that is going to take care for certain things. This is mostly applicable for object oriented concepts where class specification is on client and supplier, something like color or method we use. So, this is mostly applicable in object oriented So there is a term called client and what is it called supplier. So the methods will be there. The methods are invoked by the calling function. So the calling function is nothing but a client, and the methods are nothing but supplier, which supplies the caller. An approach that uses the documentation only to capture the design, but also the also to encourage interaction among developers. So basically, through documentation and the models or uh, any specification, we are going to uh, interact. And with the help of uh, that interaction, we are covering the testing. In design by contract, each module has an interface specification that precisely describes what the model is supposed to do. So that interface specification like ICD or interface control document will basically talks about uh, what the model is supposed to interface and interact with the other sub modules or the main modules. 
So Mayer 1997 suggests that design by contact helps ensure that modules interoperate correctly. This specification called a contract. They used to mention or name it as contract. It is not a project contract or something like that. The name itself is contract. So governs the governs how the module is to interact with other modules on the system. Such specification cannot guarantee a module's correctness, but it forms a clear and consistent basis for testing and verification because we know that the interface what is supposed to be used across the entire system with the help of that specification. So that will ease the P and V. The contract covers mutual obligations, the reconditions, benefits, the post conditions and consistency constraints is called as invariance. Together these contract properties are called assertions. Testers care about how this contract is enforced. So how it is going to be executed or enforced in that system under test is what testers have to bother about. So this is a standard or the process that is being used in the testing. The basically they use in the object oriented systems. Okay. Next we come to the another part of the embed software testing it's called as a agile testing agile testing scrum process it is called as I will not talk in detail about this but few slides we will try to go through understand what is an agile development process and what is that agile type of testing that is used in the industry. Okay. So agile proponents believe that current software development process so the background behind this I will tell in many of the industry they follow typically the process what we have laid out throughout this embedded software testing all these 30 40 process whatever it could be in terms of formal planning design testing testing using various methods or analogies analogies or any black box white box with the checklist guidelines and all this these are all part of the standard process that we follow but there are certain industries like semiconductor or SOCs or chip manufacturers they definitely have a process and all that stuff but as a part of sub process or what is that called short term to market or time to market when there is a duration is less so they think that this process is mostly useful or applicable so in that cases they use this. So they believe that current software development process are too heavy weight or cumbersome the existing one so too many things are to be done that are not directly related to software product being produced. So eventually there are many things like uh, uh, certain checklist guidelines for the sake of doing sometimes we do though it is a small piece of code we know that it is not going to crash or it is not going to uh, fail any case but we need to maintain because we are following the process for the entire thing does not matter how the big the complex uh, how big the system is or comp how, how complex the system is or how small the unit is or what is the impact of that unit if it fails those things sometimes it is it's overburden sort of a things. So that is what the agile uh, uh, proponents uh, they believe. Current software development is too rigid, difficulty with the incomplete or changing requirements, short development cycles, more active customer involvement needed, CMM focus on process, we know that CMM capability in terms of CMM level capability maturity model it is called up to 5 levels of maturity models are there like continuous improvement and all the stuff we also have a lean six sigma where we avoid waste and all that all these are getting followed 
are used actively but uh, they believe that uh, uh, we can improve on that on certain things so better to use that so what is that called as agile process so agile process or methods are considered as lightweight process it's a people based rather than plan based here it is totally surrounding the process or the documentation or the checklist or the guidelines or the uh, the underneath process basically all the activities or the uh, uh, methods that we use uh, than plan or uh, than the people but in the agile method we basically uh, will have a people based or the team based or the resource based rather than the process based or the plan based it's a lightweight uh, process several agile methods are included uh, existing it is called no single agile uh, actually wrongly mentioned uh, it is called as uh, xp there is another thing scrum is the one model we have and uh, extreme programming xp that is also one of the model that uh, we have uh, these are all uh, basically agile methods a statement of values for the agile process is something like individuals and interactions are uh, taking the priority that is over process and tools working software over comprehensive documentation that is what uh, the value is in the agile process customer collaboration over contract negotiation so basically the need of the customer and its customers client etc all that collaboratively looked look into in terms of agile development and responding to change over following the plan so as we follow the plan we may have to adopt certain changes into or the existing plan so we don't need to revisit again and all that following the plan uh, with again another set of plan uh, instead of that we can spend on this kind of change that we have for you then the plan itself uh, there are different uh, agile methods are uh, existing scrum is one extreme programming is another one adaptive software development asd dynamic system development method dsdm likewise there are several methods that are being used scrum and extreme programming are most popular uh, it's also called as rapid uh, prototype development uh, rad and uh, there is a website called agile alliance uh, they basically do a research and uh, try to promote uh, this agile development uh, www.agilealliance.org you can go through so that talks about agile development process uh, in particular we we'll try to understand the agile development of scrum process scrum is an agile process that allows us to focus on delivering the highest business value in the shortest time so basically it's purely a commercial sort of a thing where uh, time to market like highest business returns in the shortest time that is going to be followed that is going to be used as a process that is what is called as scrum process it allows us to rapidly and repeatedly inspect actual working software every two weeks to one month this frequency is decided so during that frequency it will be repeatedly inspected for the actual software or the working software the business sets the priorities our teams self managed to determine the best way to deliver the highest priority features that means we have a prototype that has to be delivered to the customer and based on customer approval we are going to have the production and all that basically they use in the production and all that this agile agile development scrum process every two weeks or a monthly basis anyone can see the real working software and decide to release it as is or continue to enhance 
for another retention. That is what we do in the scrum process. You can see a diagram of depicting this scrum process. Uh, that uh, whatever the frequency that we have spoken here, uh, we are going to have the artifacts or the developed items that are available. So that is nothing but the sprint. The sprint is basically a deck of various activities. So back backlog test tasks are going to be expanded by the agile process, and that is going to define a 30 days framework. And within that 30 days framework, we are going to have another site like a Scrum meeting. The Scrum meeting will come up with different stakeholders in the team. And they will speak about uh, uh, what is going to happen today, what is going to do tomorrow, and all that. And uh, so, we are going to come with an end product at the end of this uh, Scrum process on a cyclic way or the uh, defined uh, iterative way. So, now Coming to the testing process, we may think that testing is needed because it is so short 24 hours, one week, two week, and all development itself consumes maximum time. So, where is the scope of testing? Of course, testing can also follow sort of a quick scrum process or quick testing process, it is called agile testing scrum process. So, what are roles of tester in scrum? Actually, there is no tester in formal Scrum process, so there is no definition of tester only, it is part of the development team only. So, testing is carried out by the developer with unit testing. So, he himself will identify some instrumentation, try to stub or drive uh, the various units that are being used in the Scrum. So, testing coverage testing is carried out uh, by product owner or the client basically, the end client or the uh, the complete ownership whoever has he will do the coverage what piece of software is working what is not working how much of the functionality is being covered what are the requirements that is uh, undergone likewise frequently testing by product owner each print that is a backlog of all the various decks testing acceptance criteria also will be defined so that is what we do a agile testing scrum process uh, mechanism Next type of testing uh, that is called as a test driven uh, development. So, basically, what we do here is uh, test driven development, uh, uh, we execute uh, before we actually we do the development uh, on the developed part uh, and uh, we optimize the development uh, as we progress. So, as and when we do a small chunks of uh, development, and uh, um, uh, we'll try to test it. So, we basically test for the failure uh, nature of the particular uh, feature or the processes that we have used. So, test driven development uh, means testing executed before actual development. Uh, the complete development and refactoring uh, performed to optimize uh, development. So, again and again we will revisit this. So, we write a test that fails, write just enough code and repeat it. This is what we are going to continuously do it. So, this is what is called as test driven development. So, basically, it surrounds uh, the testing aspects of the uh, particular unit and accordingly we are going to have a development that is what is called as test driven development. Test management and control, so this is also an important thing, test control, so how are you going to have this test artifacts managed and controlled, so what do what to do when things happen that affects the test plan, so you may have to revisit the test plan something got affected, something got changed, so what are those? Reallocation of resources, changes to the test schedule, changes to the test environment, changes to the entry exit criteria, changes to the number of test situations, changes to the test suit, 
changes to the release date. So these are some of the aspects that affects the test plan. How are you going to do it? That is all with the test control. What we are going to do it. So that is what is test management and control. So for test management control also, we will have several tools. That is called as a test management tool. As I said in one of my earlier session about this. That is a test link and a bugzilla. Uh, I will try to go through that quickly in the uh, next class. We will try to study about test management tool, defect management tool, etc. So that with that we will uh, come to conclusion. We studied about uh, test management, agile Scrum test process, test driven development, agile development process, test design by contract and uh, test process aligning to the software V model. So with that we will end the today's session.